Uh, all right, come back next time when three new players will take on the big board here on FIFA Puzzle. Goodbye. Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. 18 years old and he knows a lot, but going for 32,000. Here it is. The final episode of what television series was the highest rated episode in American television history? The answer is B. Rich. You know, I'd like to ask the audience on this one. This may end up costing me some money, but I'd like to use my final lifeline. I'll go with B, MASH. It was MASH. $32,000. He's right. It's for you. I'm just going to walk away with the $64,000. The winner is Jeff Rizzo. Now, join us from New York for night 44 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Uh, just like everybody else, we're getting ready around here for the big Super Bowl weekend on Sunday night, where you'll get to watch it on ABC. But on Saturday night, make sure you join us for a special edition of our Millionaire Show in anticipation of the big game on Sunday. But tonight, we've got our own great matchup under our own dome, 11 real-life contestants lining up against each other. And kicking off the show tonight is Jeff Kreiser from St. Charles, Missouri, and you're in pretty good shape, aren't you? I think I'm doing all right so far. But tell me, how have you and your lovely wife, Carrie, prepared for this? And this is quite a story. They were childhood sweethearts, went to the same school together. Same high school. You used to copy her homework. Th that's the story she tells, that, that I always copied her homework, and I would end up with the better grades, and she kind of got a little mad at me for that one. But And did you date all the way through high school? Yeah, we started dating in ninth grade. Um, and, and actually... She doesn't like to tell a lot of people this, but she broke up with me uh, after 10th grade for about three, four months. Oh. So You won her again. It, it took some doing, but uh, we managed. That's nice, and you've been together ever since. Yes. So what did you do last night in preparation uh, for today? Well, we got back to the hotel, and, and we had our phones ringing off the hook, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of calls coming in, a lot of calls to be made. Um, and so she was actually on the hotel phone, uh, standing in the closet talking to some people, and and I had my uh, cell phone with me, you know, talking to some other people. So we had a, a lot of conversations going on, and finally got to a, a late, uh, quiet dinner, about 9:30 or so. And then we uh, somehow or another managed to, to get a little sleep in last Good. night. Well, now you got to win some money to pay for those phone calls. That's for sure. My, uh, my relatives have already told me that they they've been on the phones nonstop since I found out a few nights ago that I was going to be on the show, and uh, they told me I, I owe them some money for the phone bill. <laughs> A lot of excitement back there at St. Charles. Well, you've won $2,000. You're nine questions away from winning $1 million. Once you reach the $32,000 level, Jeff, you're guaranteed to leave with at least that much money. You have all your three lifelines intact, and that's good. 50-50, the computer will take away two of the wrong answers, leaving the correct answer and the wrong answer if you ask it. And you can also ask the audience where you can poll our studio audience to see what they think the answer is. Finally, you can phone a friend. We're our friends at AT&T. We'll help you call anyone anywhere in America to see if they can help you out. So, Jeff, if you are ready. I'm ready. Studio audience ready? Let's do it. Come on, let's play. Let's play who wants to be a millionaire. Here we go. For $4,000, Jeff, check it out. In the movie The Green Mile, what is the occupation of Tom Hanks' character? Police detective. Fireman, groundskeeper, prison guard. Well, unfortunately, I did not see this movie. Uh, meant to, but didn't get a chance to. Uh, I'm going to ask the audience. When I ask the audience? No problem. Jeff needs your help, audience. On your keypads using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. All right, looks pretty overwhelming. 87% say he was the prison guard. Makes me look uh, a little stupid, but uh, we'll, we'll go with the audience and go D, prison guard, as my final answer. He says it's his final answer. He, it's a good one. You got it. You won. $4,000. All right, here comes the $8,000 question. In January 2000, who replaced Bill Gates as the CEO of Microsoft? Paul Allen, Steve Ballmer, Steve Jobs, Steve Case. 
believe it just, well, obviously just happened January 2000. It is B, Steve Ballmer. Final answer. Yes. Yeah, it was Steve Ballmer. You won $8,000. Seven away now from one million dollars, going for sixteen thousand. Here it is. Which band reported Ticketmaster to the Department of Justice in 1994 for monopolizing the ticketing industry? Rage Against the Machine, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. I'm gonna take my 50-50 on this one, Regis. No problem. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving uh, one wrong answer and the correct one, please. I believe the answer is D, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Confident? Pretty confident. Final answer? That is my final answer. He says Pearl Jam. <laughs> He's right for $16,000. Okay, we're going for 32000 now, uh, Jeff, and if you get there, you'll be able to leave with at least that much money. So it's kind of an important question. Here it is. What runner cheated to win the Boston Marathon by joining the race less than a mile from the finish? Julie Crone, Roberta Gibb, Rosie Ruiz, Zola Bunn. If memory serves me, and I certainly hope it does in this instance, the answer is C, Rosie Ruiz. Final answer. That is my final answer. You just won $32,000. All right. You got the $32,000. Going for 64. dollars away from $1 million. <sighs> Jeff Kreiser, he's up to $32,000 and going for 64. Now you can't leave here with less than 32, which is good. Uh, you're attending uh, Washington University in St. Louis, going that, for your MBA? That's correct. I go uh, part-time, and, and actually, as it uh, will be, I'll, I'll miss class this evening, probably, and uh, miss class uh, the other evening, uh, yeah. well before, so. Got a little trade-off there. I think this is worth it. Exactly right. All right, so you're five away from $1 million, Jeff. Here it is for $64,000. let us play. In what state is the nation's highest zip code, 99950, located? Alaska, Hawaii, California, Washington. Well, I don't have my 50-50, but that probably wouldn't do me any good anyway, because I'm pretty sure which two would be left. <laughs> I'm going to phone a friend. Sure. Who? Uh, I would like to call uh, Charlie. Charlie? Who's Charlie? He's a family friend. He's actually a uh, father of a guy I grew up uh, right next door to. Me. All right, fine. We'll get Charlie on the yes. line. AT&T will find him, bring him to us, see what he has to say. Hello, Charlie. Yes, Hi, Regis Philbin here in New York City. How you doing? I'm doing well, Regis. Very good. Now we have uh, Jeff here. He needs your help. Okay. He's won thirty-two thousand, going for sixty-four thousand. He's got a question to ask you. He'll read you the question. Four possible answers. One of them is the right answer. So, uh, Je uh, Jeff, if you're ready, uh, you start talking to Charlie. You've got thirty seconds, and they start right now. Charlie, in what state is the nation's highest zip code 99950 located? 99950? Is it A, Alaska, B, Hawaii, C, California, or D, Washington? Jeff, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I would eliminate California and 
Hawaii, but I'm. Is, nine, is nine, it Hawaii? Do you know if it's give, Hawaii? Give me the number. Again. Do you know if it's Hawaii? <laughs> give me the number. Nine, nine, nine. Well, I guess I'll, I'll take a guess because I have, I have nothing to lose there here. There you go. I'm going to go with uh, A, Alaska. Any reason why? I, I visited Hawaii last year, and that just doesn't seem t to be right. And I, I know that uh, I'm thinking how the zip codes go. I think it should be Hawaii because they go higher, I believe, to the southwest. But something makes me think it's Alaska A. Final answer? That is my final answer. You got it, you won $64,000. When you get home, be sure you tell that to Charlie. All right, you're four away from a million dollars now. No lifelines left. $125,000 right here. If you miss, you'll be back down to $32,000. But here it is for $125,000. Besides John F. Kennedy, who is the only other president buried in Arlington National Cemetery? Woodrow Wilson, William Howard Taft, Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower. Typically know a lot about presidents. Unfortunately, this isn't one that's, uh, that's coming to me. I know uh, my wife's sitting up there thinking that uh, after I get done paying Uncle Sam, if I, I go back to 32, I won't have her enough money to buy that car for her. She's smiling, but that's what she's thinking. That's what you get after, after spending your half your lives together, I guess. I know Dwight Eisenhower was a veteran, but I don't believe for some reason that he was buried in Arlington. Well, what do you want to do? Well, I know what 10 people behind me want to do. They want me to hurry up. <laughs> They're just late. You got the question and not them. Yeah. I've got a guess, but I'm, I'm just not sure. So, you want to take the money, or do you want to use the guess? I think I'm going to take the money, Regis. Well, we understand that. I understand that. Sure. That's your final decision. Is that your, your final decision? That is my final decision. Final decision. All right, well, now we've got to check the 64,000. Here it is right here. Well, why don't we go with your guess? Let's find out. Oh, this is torture. Go this, ahead, take this a guess. This is torture. I'll tell you what it is. I, uh, that's what I'm afraid of. I believe the answer is A, Woodrow Wilson. Take the 64,000. Oh, it was William Howard Taft, believe it or not. Yeah. That was my, that was my hey, look at that. 64, man. Good for you. There you go, buddy. Good luck. Out <laughs> Tough question, all right. But you know, he did the right thing, and uh, Kerry certainly looks happy up there in uh, the audience. Right now, we've got Ted. Well, 
That was a gutsy move, wasn't it? Well, you know, it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt, who was uh, 42 at his inauguration, Kennedy, 43, Clinton and Grant, 46. But we've still got nine more contestants itching to get into that hot seat, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these phrases in order according to when they first became popular, starting with the earliest. Me generation, beat generation, lost generation, Generation X. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest. It was lost generation, then the beat generation, then the me generation, then Generation X. That's the order. Let's see who got it right. In the fastest time, the winner is Dan Duty. Yeah, Dan Duty. How are you, buddy? Right. Good to see you. Ready to play? Yeah. Come on, let's go. He's 26 years old. He's from Kent, Washington, just outside of Seattle. His name is Dan Duty. Dan Duty. I guess you get a lot of kidding about that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a lot. The Duty Man is here. <laughs> what do you do, uh, Mr. I'm Duty? I'm a temp secretary. Temp secretary? Meaning you go to various uh, the businesses? Various locations. Uh -huh. me, yes. And uh, you're single? I am. And you're accompanied by your, your college uh, buddy, Brad? Brad? Yep. You guys went through four years. What school? Uh, Western Washington University. Uh -huh. Birmingham. You take credit for the social uh, socialization of Dan Duty, right, Brad? I did. What was he like in school? Uh, he started out as an introvert, and now he's an extrovert, and he's on national television. That's right, he sure <laughs> is. Duty Man has made it. <laughs> but right now, if you know the rules, and I think you do, and you know your lifelines, Dan, we're all set here 50 50. You can ask the audience, you can phone a friend. So if you're ready, Dan, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> I can't stop. Who wants to be a millionaire? Duty do. <laughs> stop it! Let's go for $100. Check it out. According to a proverb, what do April showers bring forth? Twin towers, May flowers, superpowers, long hours. Now uh, that would be B, May flowers. You're right then, May flowers. You want $100. We go now for $200. In the comic strip Peanuts, what object did Lucy frequently get Charlie Brown to attempt to kick? Was it a football, Snoopy, pumpkin, soccer ball? Well, the Super Bowl is on Sunday, so a football. You're right, Dan. $200. You got it. For $300. In the U.S. today, what is the most popular color for a wedding dress? Blue, white, red, salmon. <laughs> I'm going to go with the tradition and go with B, white. You got it for $300. $500. Which of the following does not contain caffeine? Coffee? Chocolate? Water? Coca-Cola Classic? Uh, that would be C, water. Absolutely right. It's water, of course. $4,000. By definition, tarot readers tell fortunes using what? Cards. Clouds, crystal balls, stones. Uh, the answer is A, cards. Tarot cards is the answer. You want $1,000. He's in good shape this time. Going for $2,000. All of his lifelines are ready. Come on back and see how we got it. today Dan Duty with us now from Kent Washington his uh, college pal Brad up in the audience how do you think he's doing so far Brad he's doing great keep it up Dan he sure is he's one thousand he's going for two thousand all of his lifelines are intact first time in New York City first time in New yeah. York City what do, you, what, what do you think uh, it's a really big place <laughs> One day, Duty, it's going to be all yours. <laughs> Maybe today. All right, Duty, you're in great shape here. You're going for $2,000, 10 questions away from 1 million, all your lifelines intact. Let's play. Let's do it. Here it comes now for $2,000.
What classic fairy tale was retold in the 1998 Drew Barrymore movie, Ever After? Little Red Riding Hood? Hansel and Gretel? Sleeping Beauty? Cinderella? Uh, the answer is D, Cinderella. You see the movie? Uh, no, I didn't. Final answer? Uh, I watched Cisco Neighbor, and they referred to it as a remaking of Cinderella, so yes, final answer. Final answer. He says Cinderella. He's right for $2,000. We go now for four thousand dollars. This is what it looks like. What state's motto is "Live free or die"? Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Virginia. I do not know this, so I am going to uh, ask the audience. Okay, fine. Audience, uh, Danny is a little help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D. Please vote now. Well, there it is. 51% say it's New Hampshire. 22% go with Massachusetts. Kind of a spread out vote. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my 50-50 on this one, too. I trust this audience, eh? I'm, the numbers were a little I randomly understand. distributed. Sure. All right, let's get the computer to take away two of the wrong answers, please. Leading Dan, one wrong answer and the correct one. Massachusetts, New Hampshire, precisely the way the audience uh, yeah. hold it. I'm going to go. I'm going to guess. I'm actually going to go against the audience. My thinking being that the revolution was a real hotbed in Massachusetts, the Boston Tea Party and such. And. Um, Many great patriots came from there, so I am going to go with B. Going against, that rarely happens. Final answer. Final answer. No, the audience was right. They said no answer. I'm sorry, Dan. That's all right. You're a good guy and a lot of fun, and I thank you very much for coming and playing with us. You want a thousand dollars, okay? The best to you. Good luck to you. Wow, only the second player ever to go against the audience. Joel Winklesass uh, went against the audience in a 51 to 49 vote in series two, but he was right. The vote this time wasn't that close. But anyway, we've got eight more contestants ready to go here. Stay tuned to see who is going to be the next one to make it to that hot seat. We'll be right back. Treat your ears to $260 off Eargo 7. Welcome back, everybody. A good luck, contestants. I don't need to remind you that this is probably going to be your last opportunity tonight. So here is the fastest finger question. Put the following TV series in the order they debuted, starting with the earliest. Eight is Enough, The Brady Bunch, Seventh Heaven, Full House. <laughs> hey everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest, The Brady Bunch. Then came Eight is Enough, and then Full House. And finally, Seventh Heaven, that's the order. Let's see who got it right in the fastest time, Patty McGrath. Another woman has made it to the hot seat, and we're happy to have her. She's from uh, Franklin, Wisconsin, just outside of Milwaukee. Her name is Patty McGrath, and is single, single. and has her uh, older sister with her here, right? right? Nice to see you, Kim. What do you do, Patty? I'm a warranty manager for a Dodge dealer in warranty Milwaukee. Warranty manager. And this is your first time in New York City, then, yes, with sir. your sister, Sam. What, what exactly did you do? 
We went out for dinner at a Chinese restaurant. Ah, did you get a fortune cookie? I did because of uh, the previous guest. Yeah, we had a guy here last week or two weeks ago mm -hmm. with a fortune cookie. Right, and it worked out well for him. And what does your fortune say? Well, I happen to have it right here. It says, the hard times will begin to fade, joy will take their place. Oh, gosh. This is very promising. Working out. All right, good. Well, let's see what happens, all right? You know about the rules. You know about the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience, uh, phone a friend. So if you're ready, Patty McGrath, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. We begin with the $100 question. According to a popular rhyme, what should you not let bite when you're preparing to sleep tight? Gremlin. Sandman. Bed bugs. Cujo. The answer is C, bed bugs. Yes, you're right for $100. $200, Patty. Which of these is the specific name given to a chart that visually represents statistical data? Cheese chart? Pie chart? Water chart? Bologna chart? The answer is B, pie chart. Pie chart's the right answer. You want $200. $300, here it comes. Which of these is the name for a moving staircase? Monorail, escargot, elevator, escalator. Uh, moving staircase is an escalator. Yes, you're right, it's an escalator. You won $300. Going for $500. What sort of scissors are designed to give fabric a zigzag or notched edge? Pinking shears? Bolt cutters, cuticle scissors, safety scissors. It's a pinking shears. Sure, it's pinking shears. You want 500 For $1,000. What is the maximum number of points a professional basketball player can score on a single shot? One, two, three, four. The maximum number of points is three, Steve. You're right, it's three. Okay, you can't leave it with less than that, Patty, but let's look at the $2,000 question, and here it comes. What famous American landmark is known as the Rock? Washington Monument, Alcatraz Rock. Island, Boulder Dam, Mount Rushmore. I know this because I went to San Francisco, and I didn't go there. The answer is B, Alcatraz Island. Alcatraz Island, final answer? Yes. They call it the Rock, you're right, $2,000. Patty McGrath going for $4,000, here it is. According to mythology, whose hair was turned into snakes by the goddess Athena? Miranda, Medusa, Medea, Macwitch. I'm going to go with B, Medusa. It's a guess? It's a good guess. Good guess. <laughs> Final answer? Uh, yes. Good answer. You won $4,000. That sound means that we're out of time for tonight, but Patty will be back here Tuesday night. Joining us for a Saturday night special Super Bowl edition will be 10 new contestants. And they are Charlie Ovitz, Steve Puckett, Charles Anderson, Neil Kugelmas, Scott Knowles, Don Rowan, Joe Campbell, Todd Herson, Don Dersini, Trinity Green.